welcome to um, Sensible Second Hand Classics, the uh, show that we do when we want to look at a car that is over 15 years old that you can buy for a budget of between one and five thousand pounds. Actually, this really should be called Non-Sensible Second Hand Classics because uh, <laughs> this 1998 Volvo V70 T5 SE, which has been modified with a lot of R bits, is not sensible at all. In fact, this is a really non-sensible second-hand classics. But nevertheless, I am enjoying myself tremendously. So the P1 Volvo V70 is actually a very heavily facelifted 850. And uh, for the 1997 model year, these cars came out end of 96, beginning of 97. Um, they separated the 850 saloons in the state into two distinct models. The S70 was the saloon and the V70 was the estate. They kept some of the same engines but also changed them too. And uh, I actually prefer the look of these over the 850s. Um, that's just a personal thing. Some people might disagree about that, but uh, I prefer these. This one has got, um, well, a modified engine. Um, and it's got 320 horsepower. Uh, that is not what this car would have originally would have had. It would have had closer to about 240 horsepower uh, from this um, 2.3 T5 five-cylinder Volvo white block engine. Other engines available in the V70 uh, P1 were a 2 litre 10 valve engine, 126 horsepower, a 2.5 10 valve engine with 144 horsepower, and then a, a 20 valve engine on a version of a 2.5 which first generated 170 and then made 165 horsepower. Now, the 2.5 is a very confusing engine because it wasn't really a 2.5 at all, it was actually close to 2.4 litres. I think the actual capacity is 2435cc. And so in um, 1999, when, uh, rather than the, the um, 99 model year, I think it was, the 99 model year or 1999 itself, um, Volvo actually renamed the 2.5 to 2.4. It was the same engine, but they just renamed it. Now, that then came with, with power outputs of uh, 140 and 168 horsepower. And uh, those very late cars, I think, also got electronic throttles. They did be introduced into the T5s a little bit uh, before that. There's also uh, actually a turbocharged version of this 2.4 or 2.5 engine, which generated 193 horsepower. That is the most common engine um, which uh, came with all-wheel drive. I think that was maybe in, this, in our market the only one that did come with all-wheel drive in the uh, XC70 or the VB70 all-wheel drive. Above that, the 2.3 T5. First of all, generated 237 horsepower. These slightly later T5s, I, I, I think, that can actually uh, make a little bit more. Then there's the R. Now the R had different power outputs initially for the automatic and the, manu and the manual models. The automatic was very similar to the D5 around 240 horsepower, the manual was at 250. But for the 2000 model year, right at the end of P1 V70 production, they actually upped the power output of the R model by ch changing the engine entirely to a 2.4 engine, not a 2.3, which is what all the other T5 and R models had had at that point. A 2.4 engine with 265 horsepower. There were also some diesels available, but as usual, due to controversial government legislation and all kinds of other reasons, uh, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. talk about is the uh, 
very, very firm suspension in this car, which is, oh, it's really firm. I don't think just because I've used a seat on that it's uh, proving to be um, a little bit interesting in the posterior area. It's, uh, it is very firm. You probably notice the camera moving around a lot. Please, I've got my special mount, which uh, is much more reliable than a lot of the ca other camera mounts I've used. Um, to drive, it's, it's a bit like a, a C70 and 850 combined, really. Um, that's not really much of a surprise. Steering in this, for some reason, feels nicer than my C70. I don't know why that is. Um, I've heard on the R models, and maybe in this one, because it's had modified suspension put on it, that the steering lock isn't particularly good. Uh, it's like a C70, which is also a terrible steering lock. But obviously the visibility in this is a lot better than one of those. The engine's just got a lot of power, an awful lot of power. And because this is a cable from the car, um, the electronic throttles came in in sort of mid-98, I think, for the uh, T5 and R models, and then mid-99, I think it was, for everything else. This is a cable one since 98. Um, the rotor response is really, really good. Something to watch for with the uh, electronic throttle cars is that the, um, the system can actually go wrong beyond a set number of presses. So, it's best really uh, to have that checked when you buy one of these, just to make sure it's okay. As you can see, uh, viewers, we've just sort of pulled up here by the side of the road in this uh, little uh, wolf, uh, war memorial here in the lovely Northamptonshire countryside. This car has in excess of £17,000 worth of modifications on it, which is just crazy. Uh, that bumper is off an R model, uh, the headlights are custom, the grille is off a really, really late um, P1 V70. This is a 98, this would be off a, maybe a, like a mid-99 to early 2000 car. Um, they stopped selling them technically in this country, the P1s like this, um, in December 99, although uh, there were a lot of cars registered in 2000 as well. Got some aftermarket wheels on here with uh, some low profile tyres. They're actually only 17 inches. These mirrors, this is interesting, um, it's a bit difficult to show you this exactly, but these are Japanese spec mirrors. The little insert is aftermarket, but the power folding mechanism, which is only on the Japanese cars, I'll have to actually turn the ignition on, as you can see from here, actually got that power folding function. But if I turn the ignition off again, um, ooh, they go back in. Uh, there should be a button to actually make them go out if they, your engine's not on, but that's not fitted yet. So that is uh, just a little thing. That indicator lens is different as well. The rear bumper on this car is not off an R, it's actually off an XC70, but the cutout has been done just to put the sort of twin exhaust on it. The car actually produces around 320 horsepower. It uh, would have been around uh, 240 as a as standard in a 98 car, which would have been on a cable throttle originally. This car is still on a cable throttle, uh, but it's actually been um, converted to not use a distributor any, and, and anymore, which, um, you'll see actually on the engine itself. It's very confusing. Later ones than this, um, starting I think in late 98, actually did have an electronic throttle. This is still on a cable one. The seats are actually off and are as well. But this centre console is off an S80 executive. It's got crystal glasses in there and a uh, bottle opener, which is nice. I think we've got some cup holders in here as well for fancy things. There we go. It's quite a nice action, actually, that. So, same as an 850, uh, plenty of space in the back. Mr. Atkinson, who owns this car, is uh, about the same height as me. So, this is sitting behind his driving position. 
and there's plenty of room. Headline's a little bit on the dark side. I don't know if this is an original headline, right? I think it maybe have been changed actually. Um, but these seats are really comfortable. A lot of the, the V70s would have actually had um, a child seat in the middle of here, like on the 850 that we tested, belonged to Mr. Hunter from uh, Jeff Bice Cars. Obviously, this doesn't. And we've got the black leather. This is like kind of, I suppose, a, a sort of step beyond what they were uh, doing uh, when they built these brand new. It's kind of got all the sort of bits on it to make it, um, well, sort of fully customised and even faster than usual. So we'll be <laughs> trying uh, not to do too much wheel spin, viewers. Uh, let's uh, try to keep it a little bit um, sort of civilised, shall we? Materials all feel very good. A little bit of carpet at the bottom of there, like on a, on a C70. Uh, that's not a surprise, I suppose. 12 volt socket here, no heated rear seats, unfortunately. Um, ashtray down there. Good storage for all the stuff that you're going to need if you actually want to be a fast father or a fast mother in this car with the family. So this dashboard is actually a little bit interesting. It's got the original mileage of a car. It's actually over 200,000. Um, well, the white block, though, it, it will just sort of keep going, really, as long as you look after it. The uh, inserts, though, the blue actual dials, as opposed to the electronic mileage, are off an R model. We've got Volvo overmats, of course we have, but underneath them, those are actually R mats as well. Or rather, I should say, the carpet is, uh, yeah, you know, is actually a mat. It's, I thought that was part of the carpet, that's actually a separate mat. Right, let me move my stuff over that side and we'll have a look further at the uh, rest of the interior. So this is actually uh, a fan switch. You can turn the fan on manually if you want to. That's um, That's been put in aftermarket. Got an aftermarket boost gauge there. Also got a fuel ratio meter there. This uh, panel is actually off the sort of slightly earlier V70s. Um, the later P1s had one that's a bit like my C70. Um, this is uh, just uh, kind of a um, rotating knob. The later ones have a little slider there. We've got a dual zone air conditioning. It's not climate control, it's just air conditioning. Head unit's been changed as well, but the original uh, CD changer for what would have been in here um, in 1998 is still in the boot. I'll show you that. We've also got this uh, metal panel. I think this is actually off a, um, a late uh, first generation C70 like uh, the C70 that uh, Mr. Atkinson has that uh, you would have seen on my channel already. Same glove box. I don't think my secret mission documents are going to go in. I mean, I'll if you really want me to, I will, I will try, but I don't think they're going to go in. It's very carefully not ruin that. No, no, they're not going to go in. It's a real shame. We go in the doors, viewers. Yes, we can. So normal handbrake, five-speed manual. You could get an automatic as well. Um, on the R or the or the T5, you could get it on either. Um, with the uh, T5s, you did lose a little bit of, uh, of power going for the auto. Um, the um, the um, T5s, I think, were the same for about, uh, at this age, about 237 horsepower as standard with a T5 engine. So, again, these very nice seats. You see the inserts in here are kind of like a sort of um, Alcantara-type fabric. The leather on here... Um, it's a bit like my C17. It's got a, a, a leather and Alcantara interior. No wood or anything on this. It's not that sort of car, really. Um, if we have a look at here, we've got the info centre here. The earlier cars have this track. The later cars have the electronic throttle. Um, it's called something slightly different. I forget what the name of it is, but this is the earlier car, so it's got that. Um, heated seats, of course. It's a very similar dash to a C70. It's very, very slightly different. We haven't got the Dolby um, uh, surround setup, but we would have uh, on both the C70s. We have had that. A um, little shelf underneath there for odds and ends. Cup holders. 
there. This is actually off, a, I think, an, eight, an 850, this particular um, centre console here. So there's lots of d different bits that have been produced there. OBD2 port, of course, um, which came in on cars from around sort of early 97, I think, with uh, these uh, P80 Volvos. Uh, no sunroof, if I'd, I'd like that. Ooh, <laughs> I know what that will be. Right, fat viewers, let's, uh, let's go straight to the little seatbelt warning, shall we? Yes, you knew that was coming, viewers. Right, uh, let's uh, take a look in the boot. Nice uh, spoiler and roof rolls we've got here. I think the colour of this car is really, really nice, actually. It's a very, very nice colour, this, indeed. Can't remember what this actually does. Oh, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the lock if you need to. LED number plate lights. So, some of these would have come with seven seats. Um, this one doesn't. In fact, the space where the seven seats would have been is actually occupied by the uh, Alpine CD changer unit, which uh, doesn't work anymore, but it's for the older stereo, which uh, Mr. Atkinson still has. You can put some odds and ends in here if you want to. Nice big boot area. I mean, we're talking probably 600 litres or more, I would think, in, in this. Um, but the luggage net's actually in the back of there. That's a very neat little feature. If I can get to go back in, there we go. But yes, you get all the performance up to 320 horsepower if you uh, tune your car like this has been done, and you get all the practicality too. In fact, let's have a look at this uh, monster of an engine. Okay, so this engine isn't actually contemporary with the car. It started life as an S60 um, T5 engine from between about 2000 to 2002. The head is actually off uh, the car of the right era, say about 97, 98, which white says Volvo 20 valve on the top, but it has been fully refurbished. The distributor would have been originally on the, on the side of here. You can see that, that plug on there where it would have been. Um, it's not there anymore. It's still got a uh, a cable throttle, but it's actually been sort of modified this engine to well 320 horsepower. A standard would have been about uh, about 240, 250, depending on the year. And we've got the uh, earlier type of uh, coolant reservoir here, and the earlier type of power steering reservoir. Now, please make sure when you buy one of these that your steering rack is okay because they're very difficult to get hold of now. You have to have your one refurbished and it can cost a lot of money. It's very difficult to change them. And also make sure you have the cam belt done and this white block engine. Um, it is recommended every five years. I've just had mine done in my C70. Um, the job's maybe five, six hundred pounds, something like that, to have that done. Um, you can get oil leaks on these engines, um, you can get them all over the place, you've got rocket cover leaks, you can have dipstick tube, that, that, that can leak. Um, if you've got the distributor actually still fitted, they can leak around here. This engine's absolutely dry. Um, so things like the, uh, you know, the leaking oil cooler you might have seen on um, <laughs> Mr. Um, Mr. Hunter's uh, channel, Jeff buys cars on his T5850, that's not happening on here. Uh, also, turbo seals on these can go, and you can end up with an, oil, with an intercooler that's uh, got oil coming into it. Um, and sometimes, if you, your engine's not in the best condition, um, gosh, it could be more to sort that turbo out than, uh, than the car's actually worth. These days, though, it's very difficult to find um, S70s and V70s, uh, or P1 V70s, for less than about two or three thousand pounds. These are not no budget reviews cars, particularly not this one that's had all this work done to it. Um, and uh, it's an absolute pride and joy. Right, viewers, uh, enough of me going on. I think it's time to go for another drive. Lloyd Vehicle Consulting stickers, t shirts, and mugs are available by clicking the link to the Google form in the video description below. It's funny, you, you can drive this car relatively slowly if you want to. Um, you don't have to absolutely thrash it or anything like that. Um, 
obviously it, this car is designed to go very fast with all the modifications it's had but it, it feels okay I'm, I'm, I'm amazed at this sort of mixture of practicality and absolute kind of crazy performance the R's actually had um, all-wheel drive as an option I think not all of them had it but I think some of them did and then obviously you could get the uh, XC70 and um, all-wheel drive versions of the, of the, the normal V70 um, with um, that 193 horsepower, um, 2.5 and 2.4 engine, depending on what year you want to call it. But yeah, it feels feels it feels good. Um, I'm really privileged to be driving something like this. I think um, I think actually you want to go really, really kind of long distance and you want to go there very quickly. If you don't want a totally modified car like this, it's a standard one, this would be a pretty good option. Right viewers, let's have a look at some trim levels for the P1 V70. Um, with a lot of the engines, you could get any trim level you wanted. For example, this is actually an, an SE, but it's a T5. You didn't, couldn't just get a T5 top of the range. You get T5 in all sorts of specs. Um, and also you could get like a CD with the basic 2-litre 10-valve engine. So they were the S, the SE, the XT, the CD, the uh, Classic. I think that possibly might have been a run-out model. Uh, the Tools Lander, possibly again a run-out model because uh, those are well-known um, for being toward the end of production. Um, the XL and the XLT, obviously there was the, uh, the R, which just stood on its own. So should you consider a uh, P1 V70 with your hard-earned budget of up to, uh, between one and five thousand pounds as a sensible second-hand classic? Well, you've got to bear in mind, if you're looking at the T5 models in particular, that they have special problems and require special maintenance by people who know what they're doing. Fortunately, I have uh, Mr. Coleman, the rubbish mechanic, um, who is an expert on P80 Volvos, looking after mine for me, my C70. Um, but uh, they're very practical, they can be very fast, you can modify them a lot if you want to, you can keep them standard, you can poodle around in your 2 litre 10 valve if you want to, or you can go crazy and uh, have 320 horsepower out of this uh, modified T5 engine. Um, they aren't necessarily the cheapest cars to find bits for, and um, you know I wouldn't say that this is to everyone's taste, but I've quite enjoyed myself, viewers, um, particularly because <laughs> I, I have a T5 Volvo myself. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching this episode of Sensible Second Hand Classics. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment below, and thank you again to Mr Atkinson for lending me his pride and joy. Every day with blue sky